Hi, my name is Cheryl Piper and I'm in the marketing department of Sepro Systems in Langley, BC, Canada. Today I'm going to be speaking with a colleague named uh, Warren Dale. He is the technical director and process consultant for Sepro Mixing and Pumping. Warren has a successful and long career in the industrial mixing and pumping industry. He started his mixing career in his home country of South Africa in 1971. He's formed several companies along the way that focused on mixing and agitation in various industries, particularly the mineral processing industry. He also introduced peristaltic pumping technology to the South African market. In 2010, Warren and his wife moved to the Vancouver area of Canada, where he started yet another company, Canamix Processing Systems, which designed and sold mechanical agitators and peristaltic pumps. All Canamix technology and equipment was designed and manufactured in Canada. In 2016, Warren sold his company to Sepro Systems and remains with Canamix, now named Sepro Mixing and Pumping, as technical director and process consultant. Warren is a proud papa to three granddaughters, dad to a son and daughter, and married to a lovely lady named Adrian, who runs a legal practice in Maple Ridge, where she specializes in family law. And as a work colleague, I can say that Warren has a fabulous sense of humor and he lights up uh, every room that he enters. And, and he's technically very, very smart and experienced and has, um, is a great mentor to many people in the industry. So to start off, uh, today we're going to be discussing gas dispersion. And I wondered if you could explain to me how you define gas dispersion and some of the key processes you consider in terms of mixing. Yes, certainly with pleasure. So gas dispersion is what it says it is. In other words, you, are you are have a mixing tank, normally with rotating impeller, and you are taking a, a, a gaseous substance, it could be oxygen, it could be air, it could be various other gases, and you're injecting them in some form into the tank to achieve some type of process or some type of chemical reaction. Now, normally the elements of mixing that we consider are three elements of mixing. The first is solid suspension, where we are using the agitator to keep the solids off the bottom of the tank, to keep them in suspension throughout the tank, such as a typical leaching application or we get a blending duty where we take in a number of ingredients, putting them, or components rather, and putting them together, blending them together to make a third product. And then we have gas dispersion. And gas dispersion of, of those is the most complex and the most critical in the, in, 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 the, in the mixing processes. So we spend a lot of time making sure that, that we get that gas dispersion process correct. Why do you think that all of all these processes you consider this one to be the most critical and also why do you consider it to be the most complex? Well, it, it, it's critical from the point of view that it's one of the few mixing applications where you can literally go from an, uh, a tank that is operating successfully to a tank that is not, oper not operating at all without any changes to the mixes. The, 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 the gas is forcing the change, and if you get the gassing systems correct, incorrect, you can actually flood the impeller system. So with, with blending, for example, if you, if you find that you don't have sufficient power to do the blending process, or, it, or it's lower than it should be, the tank will eventually blend. It'll just take a lot longer to blend. If you've got a solid suspension application where you might have uh, slightly less power than you need, you might get a bit of solder, solid buildup, but it'll take a long time for that to become a problem. With gas dispersion, if you get it wrong and you have the wrong impeller system or you have too much gas underneath the impeller, then you can have a situation where your impeller floods. In other words, it operates in a big bubble of gas, it doesn't suspend the solids, it doesn't disperse the gas, and you can have a, an immediate failure of your process. And it doesn't take a long time. If you start putting more and more gas into it, and we demonstrate this very often, if you start putting more and more gas into it, you go from a situation where your mixer is in total control of the dispersion of the gas to the point where the gas is in control of the mixer. And that's when flooding occurs, solids start to settle out. So in our design programs, we look at this very, very carefully to make sure that we are well away from those areas of potential problem and potential upset. 
Okay, so given how important you consider this aspect of mixing, how do you ensure that you most satisfy terms of efficiency in this very complex process? Well, the, the first thing is that we have very good design programs that can predict very uh, accurately what the level of gassing is going to be in the tank and how it's going to impact the impeller system. Secondly, we have a whole family of impellers and sparging systems which are designed to cater for the type of gas we're using and also to cater for the, uh, the, the, the matching of the impeller system and the sparging system. So we make sure that depending on the level of gas, what sort of sparge system we need, in other words, the amount of gas, maybe not the level, the amount of gas, what type of sparge systems we need, we make sure that we are well away from the points where that impeller system might flood and we make sure that the power requirements that we put into the tank are sufficient to overcome any potential risk of flooding of those impellers. And we spend a lot of, I would say that on a gas dispersion system, we probably spend three, four, five times more time actually designing the systems than we do on other typical applications like leaching, where we use uh, blending and solid suspension. You've, you've given me a clear answer on the process, but does this element of mixing require greater mechanical design factors to ensure the units are mechanically reliable as well? I'm very pleased you asked that question because it's a, it's a very good question. Yes, definitely. The amount of uh, power that we need going in a lot of these big gas dispersion systems determines that the mixes are much, much larger than we would normally have them. Um, the very high horsepower very often, very large gearboxes, very large shaft diameter. So we have to cater in the design for the fact that there are very severe loads imposed by the gas systems. For example, a, a silly example is if you put your hand in front of your mouth and blew, you'd find a force on your hand. Well, that's typical of the sort of force that the impeller is seeing uh, in order to properly disperse the gas. The second aspect of that is very often on these big gas dispersion systems, you might have more exotic forms of mat material. So you might, because of the interaction of the gas and the slurry, you might, for example, find that you've got a, a high chromium stainless steel that you have to use, or you could even be into the austenitic stainless steels like Hasta, like SAF 2205. You, sometimes you even get into materials like Inkaloy, Hastaloy, which are on order of magnitude perhaps six to ten times more expensive than conventional stainless. So the agitators uh, can be very, very expensive. Then you've got the potential for a process upset, which is not caused by the impeller flooding, but by problems with the sparging system. So for example, if the sparge blocks, if you've got a ring sparge with multiple holes and the sparge blocks and all the areas coming out the one side, it's going to push the agitator shaft over to one side, it's going to put very high unequal loading on the gearbox and the bearings in the gearbox so we have to cater for that in our design with very very high safety factors. So back at the beginning of our conversation you touched on solid suspension and blending. These other elements are they also involved in the design of gas dispersion systems? Yes, absolutely. I would say in the majority of applications that we look at where there's a requirement to disperse gas, you would also have a requirement for blending and almost certainly a requirement for solid suspension as, as well. However, because of the amount of power that we need to put into these systems in order to overcome the gas and to distribute the gas correctly, it is an order of magnitude larger than we would need to satisfy the solid suspension or the blending requirements. So in short, we put in so much power to handle the gas that it looks after the blending and the solid suspension requirements as well, and we don't really need to cater for those in the design in most instances. Well, it's been great talking to you, Warren. Thank you so much for taking the time to cover this topic with me today, and I hope we will meet again soon and talk about some more uh, subjects surrounding mixing and pumping. It was an absolute great pleasure talking to you as well, Cheryl. It's been a long time. Thank you so much, and it's been great speaking with you today.